Hey guys, what is up? Welcome to my channel. For today's video, I'm going to be doing a review of the newest Pat McGrath baby, the Little Mini Mothership. So this is the Rose Decadence palette. So if you want to see my thoughts on this, see some swatch comparisons, and then also, of course, a tutorial on the look that I did, then just keep watching. <laughs> So from this whole collection, I did only end up picking up the palette. She did come out with some sheer color bombs, a lip shine, astral lip fetish balm, which is going to be a little bit more glittery, and then a few new lip liner colors. I just haven't been wearing that much lip stuff, obviously. I feel a little bit overwhelmed with my lip collection, if I'm being honest with myself. So for me, it only made sense to pick up the palette. So this little guy is $65. It's available right now on the Pat McGrath website. She also has some bundles with some other products from the collection and it is also available at Sephora right now. So while the Sephora summer promo event is going on, this could be one counting towards your $100 or $65 or however you choose to do it. You can save a little bit of money that way. As far as I'm aware from what it says online, this is a limited edition product and it's described as a love letter to ravishing roses that is rendered in a poetic palette of creamy mattes, incendiary shimmers, oh my gosh I probably said that wrong but I'm too lazy to look it up, and a divinely decadent duochrome. So let's talk about the immediate packaging of this. I really love this. This is one of her little baby motherships and it's different packaging this time. It's similar to what came out with the Star Wars collection in that it's no longer a tri-fold. It's just a normal open and close flat lay palette which I much prefer. I love that it, it's still a really cute box packaging and I love the roses. I love the design. I mean, maybe a bit overdone at this point, Pat, but I really enjoyed the packaging. I think it's very nice and I just love that you can leave it open and you have all the colors in front of you. It has a nice mirror. I really like it and I just love pink, so I love the packaging. Amazing. Let's take a deeper look at these colors. So this is a rose toned palette and I've got to be honest, I will talk about this more when I talk about the color story. Dang, we got a lot of roses now in her line. You have six shades in here. By the way, while I'm looking at it, it says made in USA of US and imported ingredients. So, huh. That's very interesting. I don't, if anybody can decipher what that means, let me know. I don't think I've heard of made of US and imported ingredients because like this one doesn't say that. Anyways, and it has a 12 month shelf life. So let's talk about the colors in here really quickly. So you're getting two mattes, three shimmers, and one duochrome. So the one duochrome is going to be this fuchsia shade right here. A nice light pinky matte, nice deeper shade. And you'll see in my tutorial section, these applied very nicely. I do have some negative things to say about this palette. And I know, of course, I have diehard Pat fans. I am one myself, but I must be honest with you guys. The shimmer shades that we have here, I just noticed they didn't seem to be as creamy as some of her other palettes that I've had in the past. And I felt some of her older palettes just to make sure I wasn't going crazy. But if I'm being honest, when I swatched these, they were a little bit more flaky and a bit more hard pressed compared to the shimmer shades in here, which literally feel like butter in the pan. So I do notice a texture difference in the formula between the palettes. And I didn't think these shimmers swatched as breathtaking as previous palettes. Now that being said, I'm not saying that these swatched bad or they felt bad. I still got a lot of color. The reflection was beautiful, but I noticed something different for sure. The shades that I noticed felt a little bit more flaky, more so than the others, was Golden Hour right here and then Fuchsia Flame right here, especially Fuchsia Flame. Now this is the one duochrome that is in the palette. Like I said, it feels a little bit rougher, but it's not like you can't pick up color. I don't have a problem with that. And this shade, is really gorgeous. I'll talk about it a little bit more in my tutorial part, but I've noticed as this is on my eyes, I actually like it a lot more. It has almost a, a purple duochrome to it. It's really stunning. They describe it as a warm fuchsia duochrome, and it's not a strong duochrome. I would have loved to have seen her play with another trichrome, just like in the Divine Rose 2 palette. That's kind of the layout, the colors, the textures that you're getting. The colors that I said maybe felt a little bit more flaky. One good thing out of that is you do get a little bit more dimension on the eye, but that may or may not be for you. As far as the color stories, kind of my opinion if you care, let me just say this. I think 
We've had enough roses at this point, and I would love to see Pat move to a more cool toned color story or a purple color story, green, blue, anything in of that nature. I know she would absolutely kill it because I feel like at this point, all of these colors have been done before within her own brand. I don't think this is a unique palette. It's not one that when I saw the reveal of it, I wasn't in love. I wasn't excited. You'll see that in the swatch comparison portion of the video because within just three palettes, I kind of found a really close match to each of these shades right here. You know, comparing it to the Divine Rose 2, you'll see again swatch comparisons. There aren't dupe for dupes, but I feel like this is almost a more edited condensed version of the Divine Rose 2. So you're not getting the exact same color, so I'm not saying if you have the Divine Rose 2, you don't need this, but I think if you weren't able to get the Divine Rose 2, this kind of steps in in that you get a similar look with the colors in here. I think they do complement each other, but I don't think you necessarily need to pair these two together. I feel like this is a Divine Rose 2S kind of palette that you could use for travel so that you don't have to carry this big clunky thing. So with that being said I just want to take you into the tutorial so that you can experience all six of these colors with me see how I got this look we'll get into the swatch comparisons and then I'll be back to kind of give you my final thoughts about this so the first shade that I'm going to dig into is peach dusk and we are going to be using this as the inner half of my crease color and this is a really beautiful shade I'm very curious to see how it compares to the peach shade that I love in the regular divine rose too but this is a really great way to start off a look. This is a great transition color for this palette. Very, very versatile. The next shade we're going into is Hedonistic Rose. I'm using a Luxie 229. I can get a little bit more precision with this blending brush. And this is going to fade out that first color into this deeper color right here. And I'm also going to run this along the outer half of my lower lash line. I'm gonna take the original brush I used for Peach Dusk and I'm gonna use that to really blend out the look. I mean, as you can see, these mattes are blending out very easily for me. The next shade that I'm going in with is this shade right here. So this is called Fuchsia Flame. It is a gorgeous color, probably the showstopper of this palette, though I will say this brush isn't extremely dense, so it does require some packing of this color. Honestly, I don't think that this is the best formulation that I've had from Pat McGrath. It just requires a little bit of extra work. It requires a little bit of extra building. If you want a seamless way to apply this, I would recommend using a glitter glue, but of course I always like to test things out without needing a glitter glue so you can see the true formulation. All over the lid, this would be very pretty as a light wash, but I do notice it's a little less creamy than some other Pat McGrath shades that I've had, and I'm going in with that dark matte shade to add some definition back in, but it almost has like a purple shift to it. It's really stunning. Next shade we're going into is Golden Honey. Now, this shade I think can be a little bit chunky, a little bit fall outy. Now it's not a bad formula. I don't want you to take that the wrong way, but I do notice, I mean, Pat McGrath comes out with a lot of golds. This is not my favorite gold in her line. It does look a little bit chunky on the eye. So if you have more mature lid, this is the kind of consistency where it may emphasize the texture on more mature eyelids. Brands like the textured shadows because they look so gorgeous swatched. They just bring the extra dimension to the eye, but when it comes to mature lids, a lot of times that can not be as flattering. Yeah, I just think this isn't her best gold formula and we have so many golds from her to begin uh, with. The next shade I'm going into is Scandalous. This is a really gorgeous copper shade and I'm going to work this out in the inner half of the lower lash line. I really like this shade. I don't know, like it's still gorgeous, but I feel like I have half shadows that do feel a little bit more creamy than this. I mean, it still applies great. It still is a beautiful color. I think it adds a nice pop to the pink theme that we have going on. So it's not a bad quality shadow. I'm just kind of thinking of other colors that I have from her. And then finally, we're going in with pink champagne. This is going to pull the whole look together for our inner corner highlight. And this will be gorgeous all over over the eyelid with those matte colors. I did get a little bit of fallout from those shades that were a little bit more flaky than I would prefer. I love the peach shade in the Divine Rose 2 so much, so I do wanna try peach punk on the cheek. 
I don't know if pink champagne will make a good highlight, but I think we can try it out. And just like the peach in that other sh palette, this is also really stunning as a cheek color. I'm gonna kind of try and blend it pretty high, almost into the eye look. Let's see how pink champagne does as a highlight. I don't know if it'll leave a shadow. I think on medium skin tones, this will be a better highlight. I don't think it's quite as flattering on my skin tone, but it works. But it just wouldn't be my favorite go-to kind of highlight, but the finish of it is very, very reflective and pretty. Okay, so I'm gonna finish the rest of my face now. So I did wanna squeeze in a swatch comparison between Divine Rose 2 and Rose Decadence. I felt like every shade in here had like at least a sister or something worth comparing in both of the palettes. So I thought Pink Champagne was comparable to Skin Show Rose Opal in here. Now they aren't going to be the exact same. I can tell that by just looking. So this top one is from Rose Decadence. This is that Skin Show Rose Opal from the Divine Rose too. So these are definitely different. This has more of a gold shift. This is more of like that has more of like a whitened base with a pink duochrome. So these two are different but the uses on the eye would be very similar. Okay we have Peach Dusk, which I thought was similar to my favorite Naked Blush. Rose Decadence, Divine Rose 2. This is more warm, more peachy, whereas this one is more pinky. But again, similar uses, I would say, as far as where you would use the colors. We'll do Fuchsia Flame. This one I definitely think is the most unique shade in this palette in terms of comparing it to this one right here. So we're gonna take Rose Seduction. So they are different. I would say these look a lot more different on the eyes. Like you can tell this is much more of a hot pink, but this actually has quite a strong almost purple shift on the eye. They definitely look more similar on the hand, but on the eye, I do notice this has a lot more dimension and shift to it. So we're gonna take Hedonistic Rose and Extreme Burgundy, which these look quite similar. The Rose Decadence color is a little bit more pink, a little bit brighter as opposed to Extreme Burgundy, which is more deep. This shade didn't have anything too close. Scandalous, just for comparison's sake, we'll take Bronze Rose. So the Rose Decadence color is definitely a little bit more orange, but kind of a similar idea. This is a little bit more gold. Okay, and then the last shade that we have is Golden Honey, and there wasn't a direct, very similar gold in this particular palette, but Pat has so many golds that I really do feel like the gold can be duped somewhere within the collection. So I'm taking Bronze Rose and Gold Lust just so that you can see how they compared. So these are the two Divine Rose two colors and then the Rose Decadence colors. There's not anything too close between the two. So there are similar shades that I feel like have a similar purpose, just done a little bit differently. Not direct dupes, but very, very close. I didn't dig through my whole Pat McGrath collection for dupes, but I did happen to grab the Levian Rose. So I'm going to swatch a couple similar colors that I thought. I mean, you can see, like I said, there is a close gold in the collection and the two deeper matte shades are actually quite different. So, but just so you can see, and then in the Subversive Metamorphosis, I did find a color that I thought was pretty close to Scandalous right here. So here is Scandalous from the Rose Decadence palette. And then here is that copper color from the Subversive Metamorphosis palette. So, I mean, that's all I'm going to swatch compare for this segment, but you can definitely see there's nothing super original about this palette, but it is different from Divine Rose 2. They paired together well, but I would say this is almost like a more condensed kind of version of it, just a little bit more pinky. So that's all I have for today's comparisons. So I hope all of that was informative for you. You. Basically kind of wrapping up my thoughts. This isn't her best work in my opinion. While I do love the packaging, I mean just in general in the makeup industry, I am over the pinks. I really am. And even within her own line, I think we've had enough of it. There's so much potential for greatness in other color stories. I really hope that the next palette she comes out with is something a little bit more different. Um, as far as the quality in here, something about it wasn't as great as some other palettes that I've had from her in the past. This one did not knock my socks off. The colors didn't feel as creamy. And I'm not saying this is a bad palette. I still think it's beautiful. I love the look I was able to create. I do see myself reaching for this palette because I do enjoy the colors 
story. You know, it's just there's a lot of other pink palettes in my collection that I could also grab for. I want something a little bit more unique. It's a good palette for sure. I do like it. Just being completely honest with you guys, I don't think it's a need at all. If the color story is something that you're interested in and maybe you don't have a lot of palettes with these colors, I do think it's worth buying for sure. But you know, my feelings were so strong for Divine Rose 2 and I thought that the, even the little Star Wars palettes, I was like absolutely in love with that. I don't feel that sense of love for this one, but I don't dislike it, so don't come for me. <laughs> Anyways, I hope you guys enjoyed this review. I hope you found it helpful. If you aren't subscribed to my channel already, I would truly appreciate it if you would consider taking the time to do so, and I will see you guys in the next one. Bye guys, have a good one.